Before continuing our journey through the romantic and symbolic consciousness of Schumann, I would like to slightly shift the angle of our vision and uh, consideration of Schumann's consciousness towards our modern consciousness. And thus, uh, view the music a bit from a modern person perspective. Uh, by doing so, it may help illuminate uh, the reasons why such brilliant works are the mainstays that treasures of our musical heritage remain somewhat incomprehensible, unfulfilled, unencrypted, even today. Despite the popularity of certain works and the widest knowledge of them by the widest range of music lovers. Wonderful works such as uh, we are now considering the symphonic etudes of Schumann and uh, from our first series, the great Russian work, pictures set in exhibition by Mussorgsky, still remain incomprehensible misinterpreted and uh, completely unsolved in terms of their content and their uh, purely aesthetic beauty. But mostly, mostly from the content of uh, literary content of, and philosophical content of the piece. Why it's happening? Here we must touch upon uh, inevitably uh, the anthropological uh, changes that have occurred over the past one, one and a half, two, 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 two centuries, especially during the 20th century. The content of Mussorgsky music, returning to our first series, is clearly not understood as many modern musicians find it difficult to bridge the historical time gap separating their souls' uh, vertical truth from that of a uh, mid-19th century uh, Russian man. Uh, we begin with the anthropological catastrophe that followed the Russian apocalypse after the revolution of 1917, uh, when the genocide of thought and culture unfolded in Russia. It was genocide of thought and genocide of culture. Such changes happen very quickly, um, when people literally discard or forget their past for even a few years. Once blinded by the influence of the new course of life, uh, they become unable to understand that simplest literary works created by previous generations. This happened in Russia. Uh, then two world wars, which completely plowed through the souls of humanity made forged such changes in consciousness that people no longer possess, uh, possessed the um, aware ability to read Mussorgsky's mind or permit the proper hearing of the most elementary musical harmonies and forms. So much has changed mankind reality. I want to say that even in my short life century, uh, I watched how quickly people forget uh, the foundations of uh, former centuries, even millennia. Um, for example, uh, I remember uh, very well, say, um, when people behaved completely differently in public places. They were much freer. Whether this is for the better or worse, I will not say. You must decide uh, for yourself, as everyone must decide for themselves. Uh, but, uh, for example, such a small detail as uh, in all English theatres or European cinemas, I remember very well when uh, there was an ashtray on the back of his chair uh, when they smoked. And every place uh, in the cinema and in the theater was a place vividly outlined around each individual in his or her armchair by his cigar or cigarette. That is unthinkable now in our days. I remember how quickly the changes occurred over the course of uh, literally several years, when people began to use the new laws of health care and the norms of behavior were legislatively introduced in uh, many European institutions. And literally within five to six years, people began to behave quite differently. 
they have changed. Uh, they became in the same cinemas at the same cinemas at dance mass. The aura of individuality seated in armchair disappeared right before our eyes, and I, being a boy uh, in Europe, was very much surprised how quickly people changed in front of my eyes within just one decade. I'm not saying that I found all European families uh, before dinner, let's say, holding their hands in prayer. Nowadays, uh, this would seem like an anachronism seen only in the movies. But it was the story for 2,000 years hence. And uh, it disappeared before my eyes in 10, 15 years. The millennial stance changed. In front, of, in front of me as a young man. Um, that's how things can change without um, our taking notice of it. To see this evolution, you need to be a very careful observer. I always love to be um, a people's watcher. And in general, as to say, I'm an observer of life because uh, it offers me a great understanding and insight concerning the mystery of using the music. So with these two examples, the century-old and millennial foundation disappears within a few years. And people begin to uh, live differently. It also changes um, uh, imperceptibly under the influence of the most inconspicuous event, the human soul. How much the soul and uh, consciousness of people were shaped by uh, the confluent impacts of revolution, genocide, two world wars. I remember conservatory old-timers told me, uh, for example, how um, Safranitsky, a great man, a great musician, uh, sat for hours and smoked on the uh, windowsill on the ground floor. I don't know if these large windowsills uh, exist or not, on which one could sit as on the benches uh, by the large windows of the small hall of Moscow Conservatory. Um, there he sat for hours smoking and waiting for students, and uh, the students did um, not go to him. Nobody warned him. Um, he, he had become unfashionable. Uh, his conscience no longer met uh, the aspirations of students. They all ran after um, uh, Gillers, after Richter, people who were um, consonant with their new consciousness, their new aesthetics. So Franiski seemed to them such a weirdo <laughs> from the past, <laughs> a weirdo. Uh, so, so, and Franiski was one of the last romantic musicians who at least understood what a romantic phrase was. Yet no one was seeking him out. Uh, he had become unfashionable. I also remember that we were children of a new age fostered by a new world view of people at the Central Music School, spoiled very much by the fall and uh, impressed with ourselves as unique, special, talented children of the Soviet way of life, <laughs> stage as the most advanced, and we acted ridiculously towards Sofranitsky and Kurt. We laughed through our ignorance uh, uh, at the unintelligible, uh, a sort of uh, dysfunctional legacy of the 19th century. Why? Because what did in relation... Uh, uh, to the presentation of music is living romantic soul no longer responded and no longer resonated any strings uh, of our souls. So damage from Soviet childhood. Our souls frozen by a new consciousness, a new world situation, a new reality in which we lived made us a shallower people. From childhood, from the early stages, but at the same time, the level of our complacency naturally increased. The more primitive a person is, the more complacent he is. Well, for us, two of the most striking romantics of Ranisky and Korto were, uh, well, what to us, something completely alien, misunderstood, incorrectly molded to generality. Old people who long ago forgot how to play. Had they ever been able to, the brainwashing uh, we were subject to may uh, to uh, to made us very much doubt uh, what I'm talking about. Doubt it in quotation marks, of course. New consciousness, <clears throat> new people, new soul. Uh, Soviet Soviet men. We had already turned into a new kind of person, not real people, uh, and this affected how people would approach uh, their role as musicians, as pianists as well. There came to be new definitions of what it meant 
for a person uh, to be skilled at playing an instrument, playing a beautiful sound with vivid physical and aesthetic effects, pretty black and white, as with a pronounced intellectual reading of a text. Our souls became completely narrowed and we wore chagrin skin. So I want to consider now those blocks of variation that have remained from this position, from this point of view, from the position of anthropology uh, by what we have become. And here, just um, the mystery of why almost all musicians is getting further and further away from us, why we must not lose our understanding of the musical cosmos and musical heritage. It is my hope that our two series, this one, the second, is now moving towards the end, and the first already completed, could help refocus the imagination on some outspoken title of a work. For example, Mussorgsky could have titled his work more aptly as, for example, Pictures of My Soul, which arose under the impression of the death of my friend Hartmann and his pictures for his exhibition. I don't think that would dramatically help because we are so separated by the 20th century, brutal amputation, a change in historical consciousness. I think a new name or more frank name might bit better reach our modern humanity. I'm not sure about this or appeal to our current sensibility. The same thing could help uh, orient the Schumann pieces. For example, had he called his work uh, something other than etudes, because the word etudes is a misnomer that, uh, that uh, disorients everyone. On the other hand, perhaps he should have called it uh, something like 11 views of my soul on a romantic hero, on the life of death, a romantic hero, the resurrection of a romantic hero, something like that. I would call it some fantastic symphony or some fantastic drafts or sketches, as you like, of life and death of a hero. Any name is suitable here because what Schumann did in symphonic etudes was to show the life of a romantic hero in all aspects of the era of romanticism starting with the death of the hero and then turning back the clock from death to life. And uh, now I want to remind you before we move on to the fourth variation or to the third sketch, uh, you can call it anything you like, as was discussed in our first series, and reconsider the mistakes of modern consciousness. That is, uh, we will see each example, a small work from this huge canvas of Schumann. We will watch how this or that part of the soul of a modern person no longer corresponds or is completely absent in composition with the full-blooded, full-fledged soul of the individualism of the mid-19th century, the Romantic era. This is in general uh, represents the last dawn of the soul of European person, of European culture, after which uh, she began to shrink, 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 and by now it becomes completely frozen, small, evil, functional, and less human. So, uh, in the first theme, if you remember, we had three main seeds, which Schumann unfolded into a huge canvas of life and death, a great epic work. That is the work we are now talking about and where we are now swimming as in an ocean of the consciousness of a romanticism of the 19th century. So, in the first theme, there was, I stress it, first main three seeds. It will stay from the very beginning until the end. 
This was the theme of the death of the hero. This was the theme of the memory of the hero's life, which will appear everywhere as a combination of major and minor, and the theme of the hero's funeral. is under the drums. In short, this is standard set used by romantics in all funeral marches and in all works that somehow developed into large canvases or simply existed as a parts of symphonies where we observe the hero's death and its idealization uh, throughout the thoughts about him in society. If you take the theme, if you remember, the main mistake of all interpreters is elementary ignorance of history. That is, the musicians simply do not even know that before them is a chivalrous romance, which should be accompanied by a very delicate lute accompaniment. Today's man does not readily see the elementary uh, proportions of the musical, elementary proportions of the architectural, and uh, does not understand the original purpose of music. This is critical, since we are not talking about one or two misinterpretations, but about misinterpretations by four to five generations of people over a century and a half. Uh, for example, the simplest three-part form of a funeral march, for some reason, is no longer part of the consciousness of a person of the last hundred years. That is, the noble pathos of our life is lost, the nobility is lost, the aesthetic sense of beauty is lost, the aesthetic understanding of architecture is lost, and the basic understanding of the meaning of music is lost. There are the dramatic mistakes immediately made in interpreting the subject. Uh, we already feel the loss of basic parts of a human soul from the very beginning, largely preventing us to read elementary, simple, musical thought in the way it was meant to be understood. So, um, let us move, uh, let us move on, uh, continue. Um, move on to the variation. And the first variation, if you remember, um, it was Schumann's wonderful idea. Uh, when he starts uh, the theme of death, starts in the other way around. This is typical thinking uh, for um, original, clear Schumann's mind, but very original, strange, uh, for a first glance. So um, the idea of reversal, the idea of reversal, uh, team of this backwards. This is, uh, by the way, this is a, a very typical uh, mindset for the times of Frankenstein. If you remember, the author a novel uh, written by an English writer. Uh, it's the same circle where Byron Shelley was uh, present, and. The same thoughts uh, that circulated throughout Europe, especially in England and Germany. It was a trend of romantic thinking to revive a person from a dead soul, make a living soul. Uh, we know that symbolic romanticism was inherent, what was called Byronism, gloomy features uh, were inherent. Thus, we see here a bit of the history of Frankenstein when people want to give life by transforming a dead body. Frankenstein seemed to be sued, sued from. Uh, the dead parts of the body, and through electric influence, uh, given new life and a freshly introduced living soul. Uh, the, his, the, the, the theme of Frankenstein, the philosophical theme of Frankenstein, was used um, as an irony, as a, a, um, a black humor, uh, and also see in a serious way, a uh, very open, romantic, serious way, as Schumann does, apparently, in, in this um, piece. Very frank and, and, uh, and very open. 
So Schumann does the same here, creates his Frankenstein in music. Four times the topic goes uh, in the opposite direction, and then we hear the theme in its original form, which starts to contradict with death. Life waves and death theme. In this variation, by the way, the only one uh, from the whole canvas, modern musicians and make the least mistakes, because the mood is very straightforward. Mechanical motoric motility and gloom. And this is notable, by the way, because it turns out that we are not mistaken in reading music that speaks only of such things. There are two qualities of the soul, of the modern soul, that is, modern men have uh, remained intact. We relate readily uh, to this thing today, mechanistic and gloomy. You see how scary it is. Uh, if the first topic is exalted nobility, uh, it is not readable. Further, the first variation, uh, where it's about Frankenstein, is about a dead person, practically Schumann passes electrical impulses. <laughs> This is absolutely perfect. He launches two electrodes and then the true creation of Frankenstein appears in front of us in music. And this read by modern men unmistakably. I cannot help laughing because it is indeed both bitter and funny. Because we will consider all subsequent variations, all sides, uh, all faceted pieces of the mosaic of the human soul. And uh, we will see that they do not find true understanding by modern men and how they're thus misread. Music is a wonderful catalyst and allows, uh, since music is a, a treasure of the human spirit and emotions, um, for the whole beauty of the human soul to be hidden there. Then we can also see in music what we are today what we have lost, and draw the appropriate conclusions. So do we want to be what we are today, or do we want to be different? For me, this dilemma does not exist. I would like us to embrace the whole history of wealth of the human soul. The further we advance in time, the richer we have to be, spiritually. But as I said, everyone will decide for themselves uh, the boundaries uh, defying these choices. So let's move on uh, to the uh, next variation. And the next variation, as you recall, you know, we have a gloomy symbolic romance with a piercing melody on top. With Ophelia-like romance where we have the theme in the lower range, then the pulsation of life in the middle range. <laughs> on one hand, it is absolutely Beethovenian. On the other hand, it is a pure romanticism. And at the same time, it's already transforming into the Byronic, and then critics of this direction laughed and called um, it is a cemetery romance. All these floating clouds and the night sky, the moon, and some deep seas. And here we have a wonderful symbiosis, if you remember, uh, between the surface of the earth and the depth. This is all perfectly expressed in the music here, when a funeral motive turns into a funeral bell. I always speak of three levels. Here we have even four levels in general, because in our bass in this variation, in the second, the funeral bell tolls. Uh, 
In the middle voice, we have the theme. Then in the second middle voice, we have a pulse. and Russian clouds on top. That is, we have four levels here. And as I have already said, all interpreters overload here because uh, the texture is incredibly rich. Four levels of texture. It is very rich, therefore they overload the sound, not understanding either the meaning, nor, as we have already seen uh, on the theme, understand the basics of the purpose of music in human life. To an extent, people do not understand what music should mean in our lives. That is, we are forced to descend to a completely primitive cave level of a numb, deadened souls. Our musicians do not understand the meaning uh, of and uh, purpose of their lives as well. Because we have to serve beauty, and beauty means proportions, transparency, uh, love, all the good. And they live their lives like this, together with all their audiences, with all our planet, not understanding the meaning and purpose of music in the human lives, listening all over and thinking that they are uh, connected with classical music and the beauty. So back to what Byron's critics called this cemetery romance. What a beauty. Here they are, the ocean depths. Yeah, they're rising, swelling, then talking to each other. When uh, amazing calls out from the ground, they look to the depth. And the answer comes from the very deep. It's like all the nature speaks to us through this music. All beauty, the entire universe, cosmos. Yes. Not understood. Nothing from this variation is understood where we see a real, symbolic, beautiful romanticism. But the human soul experiences this state for only a very brief time in history, because this tension uh, which demanded such a romantic attitude toward the world was replaced rather quickly by the decadence, or what people call decadence. That is the soulfulness uh, that spiritually begins to shrink. Uh, historically, this uh, has already turned into rather caricatured forms of poetry, as I have already said, by Edgar Allan Poe and Maeterlinck, where they just, for the sake of a pretty word and for the sake of a paint of pers uh, a person, uh, they, for example, Maeterlinck said, oh, how scary child. Every four lines, oh, how scary child. It becomes a coloration of a context and uh, meaning, just a symbol, a painting of some kind of horror uh, and romantic nocturnal, symbol of romantically nocturnal state. Although it doesn't seem to make much sense, it works as a color, as an accent. But all this uh, degenerates quite quickly to maintain such intensity, uh, the potential, uh, the potency of such a romantic state within a person's soul requires a very great level of mental intellectual, intellectual stress. Uh, people simply could not maintain this energy, this hypersensitivity, and this attitude was rather quickly issued in favor of a more pragmatically level state of wellness. But nevertheless, this music portrays an incredibly beautiful state of soul, which uh, any truly musically aware person would never betray or forget. As we study this piece, and moving forward, we pass through the steps of the beauty of the human soul. It is an incredible set of stages of the human soul's beauty. It goes in front of us on and on and on and on as a mosaic, as a non-stop mosaic. And we've seen that we've lost too many things, forgetting that focusing only on the, let's say, commercial success can lead to the abandonment of the one soul. Uh, so far, as I've told you, the only theme correctly interpreted is, was a philosophical theme of Frankenstein. So the transformation of modern soul is really funny and scary, because we became a little Frankensteins in our days. <laughs> 
If you remember in the same variation when the theme transforming to the scene of life and remembrance and elevated matters in the major key. Transforming the music into one of the relaxation entertainment music that avoid reality. It's a musical meme that quickly turns into silent movie music. Today I often heard in restaurant. Today we can often hear such music in the background music in the restaurant music, which gives us a peace of mind, a distancing of everyday reality. This kind of music went quite soon. Of course, I'm mocking a little bit. It goes to a typical restaurant, relatively cheap, entertaining music. But those days it wasn't. It happened as people stopped experiencing elevated fantasies of in a major tonality mood. Elevated fantasies of a major, a nice, goodwill kind fantasies. So in our Frankenstein variation, musicians already cannot read properly this major key modulation. They play. They play something unconvincing. The chain of chords and major harmonies not being uh, explained or, or understand or reason what this music is all about. But on Schumann's language, it is charming illustration of spontaneously getting out of harsh reality. Simple. Simply as a child language. Just flying away, so we have to get away. In sweet dreams, getting out of hard reality, good and full of inner light. It's not worth talking. That is symbolic romanticism, which goes next. Nobody understood consciously a thing. The usual architectural order is abandoned, uh, seemingly violating everything we've come to expect. We hear tasteless, vulgar expression of pulsation. <laughs> which is often played wrong, unevenly, wowing, with a very bad taste, forgetting that this symphonic texture cannot be played like this. It should be carefully orchestrated, forgetting the purpose of the piece, which is engraved in the name symphonic etude. So we see a real dark primitive consciousness of a modern man, which crushes meeting all their tasks. And if one does not properly understand and execute the material, the ever-precise symphonic texture remains unrealized. And we don't have anything. We don't have culture, we don't have music, we don't have taste, we don't have consciousness, we don't have understanding. It's scary, because this variation is rooted in Beethoven's language, so we can assume that we are reading Beethoven false as well. Because Beethoven just have a classical form, but in this form, hidden his romantic heart. He is romantic of romantics. And they read him as an intellectual. He is not intellectual at all. He didn't, he didn't pretend to be an intellectual. He is a great sensitive man. Therefore, what something as we know as Beethoven, in reality has very few to do with Beethoven's core, with Beethoven's heart. He is sentimental, greatly sensitive, vulnerable. Uh, he did not intend to be his intellectual exercise. So when I'm saying about beauty, kind and good, what is ridiculed nowadays completely? Now I'm saying my lips saying kind and good and my mind, my modern brain of a modern man is already some adding some ironic twist, caricature even to these words. Everything is compromised. Everything kind and good has been compromised. And the music is all about that. This is scary too, how we can do music when everything, what is the golden fundamental thing about music is all compromised and ridiculed. And I will hear, I will hear quote Metterling, oh child, how scary. Probably he also used this sentence as coloration describing the dying soul of human being. So again, draw your own conclusions. Under such difficult conditions of the contemporary human soul, we must either review our whole attitude towards music or reconsider the feelings a modern person has about uh, what happens to his or her soul. 
if you remember, the next variation was devoted to the spirit of Paganini, which again was a century and a half, largely misinterpreted. You can imagine uh, to what extent one must be a primitive uh, person in order to admit the idea that this great romantic work is his decisive work, what German calls Höhepunkt, the golden dome of his life, symphonic it is. So how obviously absurd would it be to assume that such a great romantic composer as Schumann, such a subtle man, would compose a work of his life beneath the guise of a study guide for piano exercises? Well, how it is possible? How could one even think this is so? Not talking about for 150 years. And if one thought this, why bring it to the stage and share with listeners for a century and a half? Unbelievable. It does not make any sense to me. I really don't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, awake, please. We have to rethink our our lifestyle, our mindset the modern state of a human soul. After all, it is as simple as entertaining French film music. This is the author and a wonderful, wonderfully poetically relaxed free state. We see his dreams of the beautiful Paganini. Well, of course, the idealized Paganini. It's not a real demonic Paganini, which once shocked Schumann at concert. This is not the living Paganini, but this is Schumann with his idealization, romanticization of the whole world of being. Uh, but this is so obvious. You look at what our soul has become. I listen to thousands of interpretations where you will hear convinced people, zombies, doing this. <laughs> Playing similar music. It is really scary. And it's just really scary. And this is played uh, by people who are uh, musical heroes, cult musicians for a generation who do not, for the generations to, who do not really understand the purpose of music. They are simply think, if they're able to think, but they're dead, with a dead soul, so they cannot think as well. This is kind of a monstrous zombie transformation of human soul that happened before our eyes, and it affects uh, the way they live and perform. When the uh, people lost, um, the feeling why they are living for and what, why do we have the music in our universe? And it still continues and becoming worse and worse in our days. For example, this variation where Schumann dreams of Paganini, we can really understand to what extent our modern soul is dead. We see all the music halls around yeah, around the world, with the critical analysis giving the prizes and premiums uh, for, for the recording of, of this dead material, dead texture, dead sounds. What for? So dead souls, dead sounds, producing dead sounds and dead people giving the dead prizes to the dead persons. Please, wake up, ladies and gentlemen, of our very scary Frankenstein music world. The solution to zombieism requires no further analysis. Schumann is confirming everything. Oh, child, how scary. I, I want to repeat. That's really scary. I want to repeat for Metrolink. Oh, child, how scary. <laughs> 